I just love everything, everything about wrestling. Uh, even all the bullshit, I just just love it all. Uh, and somebody grabs my arm, and I like look, and he's like, uh, you, "You're gonna say hi to me or what?" And it was it was William Regal, and I had not talked to him in a decade, uh, but he keeps you know he, he he keeps his eyes on on wrestling, and he knew he. I guess he had seen uh, Ring of Honor was on HDNet at the time. I don't know if he's watching on the internet or what, but he had seen clips of Claudio and myself. <clears throat> and uh, he was like, "Yeah, so you know, what's what's your deal? When when are you gonna come? Let us take a look at you." What, what he lacked, I had, and what I lacked, he had, and we just you know had good good chemistry together. So that that year, as Kings of Wrestling, just kind of took us up and, and made us kind of main eventers for them. Always works with them hands on and. And I mean, that's where guys like Sammy Callahan and Samurai Del Sol, and uh, he just it was like, hey, these guys have something. You know, they're not the stereotypical WWE prototype. But then again, what is anymore? It's it's all kind of changed. The doors are kind of open. I'd much rather put you somewhere and get you to do these things right, rather than do one of Vince's pet peeves your first first time and then yeah, he hates yeah. you forever. <laughs> so uh, he's just like, yeah, we'll probably uh, you know send you to send you to Tampa for a little while and kind of see how things go. So that was the, he didn't say that was the offer. He said that was kind of what they were thinking. Uh, the class was broken into two. They had like a morning class and then like a, an early afternoon class. So I came in. I I went into the office. He had somebody season two like. Joe Hennig, who's now Michael McGillicuddy, right. and then you have, uh, I think he was Duke Rotundo, I, I'm not sure, but I think he was Duke Rotundo, and then he becomes Husky Harris, and then later Bray Wyatt, but I, I think they were on a kick of uh, just completely wiping the slate clean and starting people completely fresh. There's just so many different ways you could go with it, so the more I thought about it, the more I liked it, and uh, I just, that was one of the names that I submitted. Uh, and they came, they came back with like three names and they're like, Hey, now it's up to you. You know, you can have one of these names. Which one do you want? So I went with Cash Sono. It was, uh, you know, all, all the guys, all the girls. Uh, and then there's really no set order. You know, somebody would go first and then they'd go and then you just, you'd have like a minute, minute and a half to do any kind of promo that you wanted. Sometimes he'd tell you to do something, uh, off the top of your head. Sometimes he would pair you with somebody you know some he's he's a very visual guy there are there are people um in the wrestling world not not necessarily wwe but people in the wrestling world that are like just call it in the ring like that's what we do you know right well a lot of those people call it in the ring and it sucks dick because just calling it in the ring doesn't mean it's good calling it in the ring based on how the crowd is reacting and what the crowd wants to see or having a plan and deviating from that plan because they're not buying it. That is the art. That's what calling it in the ring is. Some guys are just fucking lazy. They think, oh, well, you know, a lot of it's it's about characters and it's gimmicky or whatever. But I think what WWE wants is something that you can look at and understand immediately. And then once you understand it immediately, then you, they have your attention. And then you can kind of tell a backstory on somebody, and then you can kind of uh, make a deeper connection. But the the audience is so young, and the people that are paying are the parents of these kids, and and the families, and and the single mothers that have you know they have to go and spend all this money. So they need people that when you're flipping through the channels, you see and you go, oh my god, who are these guys? Whatever. As opposed to like. Someone like myself, who's like, oh, well, there's a, he's a long-haired guy with a beard, and okay, cool. But then you watch me wrestle, and you go, oh, okay, shit, I need to see this more. But you see someone like that, and you're like, oh, my God, or whatever, but he's so humble. He's so, uh, he's, he's so charismatic. He's, he's, uh, he's just awesome. And he's, uh, he's an anomaly, man. He looks the way he does, and he moves around so well. And to have that charisma, like he's really got uh, something special, I think. And it's awesome to see someone come through the system like that and do well. Uh, Ziggler is somebody that uh, got hired with, with no wrestling experience. He was a fan, but he was an amateur wrestler and, you know, he went to OVW and then he excelled. You know, he's one of the top guys on the roster now. It's just really, you forget how young they are and how crazy their lives have been. And uh, they're just, it's, that's... 
where an instance of growing up in the business is awesome because they just like, oh yeah, I remember on my fourth birthday, Barry and Kendall came over and uh, it just these crazy stories or, oh yeah, you know, my grandpa, you know, you know, spanked me or something or whatever, six foot seven Bob Wyndham or I don't know, just these crazy stories and they grow up and they've got these personalities that are just both really awesome. Bo Dallas is crazy. He just has so much energy. Another guy that was very helpful because I got to do commentary a couple times was Michael Cole. And I was intimidated by Michael Cole because he's a very, like, no-nonsense, go-do-his-job kind of thing. Uh, and that, like I said, that's how you build up a rapport with somebody. And then uh, you get a good working relationship with someone. And then next thing you know, they're, you're fresh in their memory. So when you're talking, hey, well, what about this guy? It's, you know, I just worked with him a couple weeks ago and had a hell of a match. you know. And then that's things that have paid off for, like, Antonio Cesaro. Like, uh, I remember him and Sami Zayn tore it down at full sale. It just had a hell of a two out of three falls match. It was just, the, it was good technically, but emotionally it was also good. They sold their asses off. The people went crazy. And because Hunter is in Gorilla for all the NXT stuff, he's sitting okay. there with the headset calling everything, do this. He, he gets with everybody in the production meeting. Like, he is NXT's Vince. So... Seeing Cesaro perform in that level with Sami Zayn, two weeks later you see Cesaro in the ring with Daniel Bryan, one of the last segments on Raw, tearing it up. Punk, Punk's a good one. Whenever, if he's in town or whatever, we'll grab a bite or we'll talk. But uh, yeah, yeah, he's he's it's inspiring, man. It, especially to see somebody like Bryan too. All those guys, even even somebody like Seth Rollins, who I broke in like way before. Uh, man, it's to see those guys doing their thing and. And not just doing their thing, but just to see the crowd. Man, in some of those Shield tag matches, you see the crowd going crazy, people jumping up and down. And, like, that's that's the goosebumps, man. That's when you feel it. That's when you want to, you know. Cla Claudio's another one. I don't want to – I mean, all these guys inspire me. When I, I love seeing all of them succeed. You have to have tact. You have to know when to interrupt. You have to know when not to interrupt. And it's just – it's awkward standing there and, and being in the way. But anyway, like, so I'm, like, saying hi to a couple people. And I see Paul standing there doing nothing. So, hey, excuse me, Mr. Heyman. Chris, nice to meet you. And he looks at me. He goes, Chris, I know you. And I was like – Oh, yeah? And he's like, yeah, Chris Hero, da, 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 whatever. I was like, okay, cool, whatever. And then that was that. So I'm like, oh, that was cool, whatever. So then later on, maybe like an hour later, I'm standing around the ring, and uh, we're watching the guys go over stuff in the ring, and uh, they're doing rehearsals, and I'm just kind of standing there. So I was always curious how I would fare against um, – like a Zack Ryder, like, all right, well, they're going to love Zack Ryder because, you know, he's been on TV for a while. Regardless whether he's on TV now, he has that equity built up. And he's like, oh, you know, if I get in there, like, I think I could get some really good heat. Or I think I could do that. Or, or oh, you know, maybe I'm in there with an Alberto Del Rio. Or like, all right, let's see. I, I, I wonder if I could really get these people behind me. Uh, my last real, you know, rat, last solid NXT match was with Luke Harper. What happened was I came back <clears throat> and I wrestled him and it was like three minutes. That's all we had. So it was just kind of like a tryout to see how I was doing. Bray had experimented with different people in his entourage. Uh, he had originally had Eli Cottonwood as his big guy. And then uh -huh. he tried uh, with Rick Victor. Uh, I met Hawkins through Punk. I remember there was a, there was a show in like Wilkes-Barre or something that... Rob Naylor and I went to, and uh, I recently met Vince for the very first time. I had seen him at WrestleMania, and when we were going over stuff uh, for, for a thing, like he was there. But and I and I'd also I'd seen him at a Raw too, but seeing him and actually meeting him were right. two different things. Uh, but Vince actually came to the Performance Center for the first time, like I don't know, maybe three, four weeks ago. Heart attack somewhere, or would you do what you love and? <laughs> fucking die in the ring that's it's it's morbid but there's a there's a there's something to it that helped me cope with it because i was able to see it rather than clicking on a message board and seeing that masala died in the ring i mean i'll go back and watch our ring of honor stuff someday and it's gonna blow me away because he's just so good so good and i don't really think there was anything anybody could have done that wasn't done uh and you know, thanks thanks to him and, and his situation, it educated me more uh, about people with bipolar disorder because uh, 
you hear it, and I think it's just fucking overused. Oh, he's bipolar right. or whatever. It's like, oh, well, that's somebody that has mood swings. It, I've picked up a bunch since NXT, like, because sure. uh, there's a lot of international stuff. So there's a lot of people. I'm excited to take these people that knew Cash Asono and introduce them to Chris Hero and yeah. take them on this journey and introduce them to even more people. It opens up a whole new world. I'm really, really excited for that.